Hello. All right, this is Ben. Uh, it's uh, been a while since I've done a video, so I'm going to do a quick one to show what I've been working on here. Um, this photo that I've got up on screen is uh, the Jazzy Select wheelchair, which um, I've got one of these that I purchased recently, and I've been working on converting it into uh, uh, kind of a platform for, for writing navigation software and, and putting together a basic kind of outdoor autonomous vehicle. So... This photo is uh, a picture of what, what we started with. This is the original wheelchair. And then this over here is the, the modified one. So we've taken the chair off. We've got a lot of the electronics up there. Put some bigger outdoor tires on it. And uh, got it, it's kind of a mess, obviously. It's in the middle of, of being worked on. So the wires are everywhere and all that stuff. All the panels are taken off. Um, so I think we'll go over here and take a look at all the electronics and some of the hardware that I built for it. Um, unfortunately, both of the wheels are on, so we can't really take that close of a look at the hubs in there. But I built uh, on the lathe some some aluminum hubs to, to fit these bigger wheels on there. Um, the uh, ones that came with it were way too small. I wouldn't I wouldn't be caught dead with those with those little wheels on there driving around outside in the dirt and stuff doesn't work very well so we got these big uh, roto tire tiller tires that uh, I purchased from tractor supply company and built some custom hubs to to get them on there now over on the other side I only have one rotary encoder currently I'm, I'm still have been kind of prototyping so we've only got one but on on this wheel there is a rotary encoder that I picked up from SparkFun. It just kind of looks like a normal motor. Um, there's a wheel on there that makes contact with the rim of of the tire so that it can um, pick up the motion and measure the speed. And then I've got it on a little um, uh, flopper or whatever, a little spring-loaded thing that, that pulls it up to make contact with the wheel. And... Um, it's mounted on a spot where uh, one of the fenders used to be on the on the jazzy, so so it's it had a nice mounting point. And then again, it's still prototype, so I just kind of have this wire holding the spring. But eventually, I'll build a contraption to to tension it there. Now up on top, um, we got really a lot going on. I've, I've been trying to up my game on the electronics, so we have a panda board from. Texas Instruments, a nice uh, ARM development board. And then coming down, we've got um, a, uh, a 5 volt regulator from Pololu and then a 3.3 volt regulator from Pololu to uh, convert the power to the right levels. And then over here is the uh, feed from the wheelchair's battery. So there's 24 coming in, which then goes to both of those things and breaks out the voltages I need for all the electronics. These two red guys are TTL shifters from SparkFun uh, with the Panda board being a 1.8 TTL system, the microcontrollers being 5, and then, you know, the compass and stuff being 3.3. .3. So I've kind of got, you know, a slot for, for everything I need. Over here, there are two Pololu... A-Star 32 is my favorite microcontroller. These things are really, really cool. They're, they're just like Arduinos, but they fit on a breadboard. They're nice and tiny. They only cost 15 bucks. I couldn't recommend them enough. They're just fantastic little microcontrollers. And so the one over here is in charge of signaling with the rotary encoder. I've got it plugged in. That wire goes down over there to the rotary encoder. And then this one is in charge of signaling the, the motor controller, which is here. That's the Sabertooth. Uh... 25 motor controller, which is a, a real nice piece of hardware. It's it's for making battle bots and it's it's just bolt-on compatible to these wheelchairs. It's designed to to signal to, to drive one of these wheelchair motor systems. Um, and so again, we've only got one wheel hooked up. The other one, I do need to get the other rotary encoder. So for now, we've, we've just got one wheel. So this one is in charge of signaling the Sabertooth. That one reads off the rotary encoder. And then both of them um, feed into my Panda board via I squared C. So this is this is really nice. I used to um, 
I used to do this kind of stuff with a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino, and I would, you know, communicate with the two things over uh, the serial line, which works, but it's kind of slow, it's kind of unreliable, and, you know, you have to modify the Arduino, you have to, like, scrape a trace off the Arduino to get it to just boot up and communicate with the Raspberry Pi, and you have to, you know, run a command when you start the system up to condition the serial lines and just do all this ridiculous stuff, and... This is just way, way better. So down on the panda board now, it's like a bus, right? So there's just two wires coming into the panda board and then they chain off to all the different devices just with two wires and the other stuff coming off the panda board is just the reference voltage and the, the power in to power it off the battery and so on and so forth. So I'm really liking this this I squared C arrangement with with everything. And then the Panda board has Wi-Fi built in. Panda board is just vastly superior to a Raspberry Pi. It's faster, it's more reliable. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi built on there. Um, I, I'm really liking it, it's a great board. So we can, what I've got so far is just basic velocity control of the system, um, which is really important for getting it to drive off the computer. If you've ever, uh, you know, driven a truck like on a bumpy road real slow, you know, you have to be all over the steering and the throttle to get the truck to keep moving or, you know, you hit something, you come up against a bump and it just stops, it stalls out, you know, you have to put more throttle on it to keep going and so we've got the same kind of thing going over here. So we can uh, control the the whole system with the laptop via SSH, close this. And, oops, actually it's not turned on. Okay, I've got to turn the whole thing on over here. Plug the battery in. No switch yet, so we just plug it in. Give it a minute to boot up. All right, so we'll move into our program space. So um, we're writing software for this in C, C++. I do file sharing off of this thing. I keep all the software and the projects over there, the source on the Panda board. And then um, just connect it to a Linux computer with with SFTP or Samba or whatever and um, use Eclipse to, to do my C++ development. So that's nice. So, it you know, it's good. It puts all the make files together for you and it's just kind of easy. So now that we're in the folder where the program is and we'll run it... Uh, okay, run the program. Oops. There we go. All right, so I've been building basic UI for the program with a library called NCurses, which is um, you know, an interactive system for building command line applications. It's like what Linux installers are made out of and that kind of stuff. And um, I've used it to put together these basic like little text meter style things, right? So just imagine that's like a knob, like a meter. And we've kind of got three things going on. We have um, a desired speed, which can be input with the arrow keys on the keyboard, right? Just up and down. We'll make that thing go up and down. And then the actual speed, which is the measurement that's coming off the rotary encoder, and then the throttle, which is being computed by the program and applied to the uh, to the saber tooth. So I don't have anything fancy like a PID controller or anything. For now, we're just uh, you know just comparing integers and incrementing numbers and stuff and, and doing that. But um, it works, so we might get some more sophisticated stuff on there eventually, but for now this is a good start. Um, so I'm going to double check that the rotary encoder is attached because if it comes loose, the thing will just take off at high speed. And then I'll put a small command in. So we'll up, I'm pushing up arrow, and the desired speed goes up a little bit. 
take it up to 10 out of 127. And um, you can see actual speed is, is pretty close to where it is. Throttle's kind of bouncing up and down. It's oscillating a little bit. And if we look at the thing, it's spinning. Um, again, since we only have one wheel up and down up right now, uh, it's just spinning in circles, which is actually kind of handy for testing because it stays in one place. It doesn't just go jump across the room. So the things achieved the speed that, that I've set, and when it comes back along here, we'll throw an obstacle under the wheel, and we can watch it actually throttle up to, to overcome the obstacle. So it's coming around. Get it ready. And then... Oops. There we go. So we got the obstacle under the wheel, and you can see it sped up. It's kind of hard to hold the camera and do this at the same time, so let me see if we can do another one. But it's going to actually throttle up to, to maintain speed and overcome the obstacle that's blocking the wheel. And if we didn't have this, I'm sure you guys have seen this, it would just stop, right? I mean, it would stall out and just stop. So we got to do this one more time. This is really hard to get this while I'm filming it. So it's coming around. There it is, right under the wheel. What would normally just stall it out, unless I apply more throttle, it just automatically does it. And then let's see if we can do this and look at the feedback on the screen at the same time. So there's our, our metrics on it. And I put the obstacle in. And yeah, there you go. You can see the throttle spiking and the speed uh, speed go up as it has to kind of it overshoots it a little bit, I guess. So I need to figure out what's going on with like kind of these oscillations and stuff to get it more smooth. But it, the basics are working. Throttle spiking and speed maintained. So, um, I guess that's it for now. I'll do the next video, maybe when we get the other wheel hooked up. And uh, the next steps are going to be getting the compass going. That's the compass on the left there on that board, but it's not part of the program. And uh, getting the GPS hooked up. Now that we've got the velocity control, that's kind of a basic block, building block for just getting it to navigate and hit GPS waypoints and stay on, stay on course with the compass. So we'll see what we can do. Do one more. Oops. Missing. It's kind of a tight spot to get it in there between the two wheels. It's hard to throw it while I film this. The there we go. So you can see it slows down for a second and then throttles up and makes its way over it. That's it for now. See you guys next time.